It's said that a classic wooden boat has a spirit. It's alive, whether resting on their mooring or fighting their way to weather. Up and down the New England coast, wooden boats are stalwarts of the past, evoking a sense of nostalgia, craftsmanship, and pride. While many fine wooden yachts have been born in the shipyards of the Northeast, few can rival the mystique of a Harrisoft designed and built craft. They were remarkable boats for their era. They're absolutely magnificent yachts. His boats are fast. His boats are able. They last a long time. On a memorable summer evening in June at Harbor Court in Newport, Rhode Island, three historic Harrisoft yachts rendezvous for the New York Yacht Club's One Design celebration. The event is part of the Harrisoft Golden Jubilee, the 50th anniversary of the Harrisoft Marine Museum in Bristol, Rhode Island. Over the winter of 1904 into 1905, the first class of New York 30s was constructed at HM Co. in Bristol. In 1904, the New York Yacht Club commissioned Harrisoft to design and build a fleet of 18 New York 30s. This was the waterline measurement. The yachts were about 46 feet in overall length. The concept of one design racing was new. The yachts were affordable for larger numbers of sailors. Harrisoft built a fleet of nine New York 50s in 1913 and a fleet of 14 New York 40s in 1916. Since that time, there have been nine New York Yacht Club one design classes. The most recent is the IC37s, which made their racing debut in 2019. Boats will be built all exactly alike and then drawn by lot. And that is something which was done also with other Harrisoft One Design classes. An owner did not know which boat was built for him. With the New York 30s, of course, that resulted in what later has been called the greatest One Design class of all times uh, because the racing was so hard. They built all 18 in one winter. The first one was launched on January 1st, um, 1905. The last one was launched May 15th, 1905. So they were built to compete uh, not only as a one design class, but as, a, uh, as an open class where handicap rules would apply and the result is what you see. Kind of a nice sea kindly boat. As Olin Stevens said, if I had a boat to pick, it was my favorite, it would be a New York 30. You can't get much higher praise than that. There was an organization in Greenport, New York called Full Sea, and they were doing a good job of trying to keep boats from being cut up by boatyards where, where they were just rotting away. And this particular boat I had known about, but didn't have the resources to do anything with it myself. And I got my dad interested in it. He was a, a furniture designer and craftsman, and he got very excited about the thought of restoring an old boat. From that day on, it's been in our family. She was designed well underwater. Her rig was designed well to be somewhat balanced and to point up. She can do very well in light air and heavy air, and she rates very well. So she sails faster than you think she's going to, which is but how you win races. She's also a minimalist in a sense. There's not much down below. She's not a luxurious boat by any means. She's meant to race. She knows when she's happy, and that means a good deal of wind, and she just gets going and flies, and almost it's like she's saying to you, I'm in control now and we're gonna go fast. Yeah. And it's a very big sail plan for what is considerably not a large hull. I mean, her sail plan is it's over a thousand square feet for a 40 foot boat, and that's, that's a lot of sail for that size and displacement of the boat. Captain Ned himself must have had a lot of confidence that he would build not just one boat and try it out, but build 18, and they all worked. In 1878, Nathaniel Harrisoff, already an accomplished naval architect and steam engineer, partnered with his brother John to form the Harrisoff Manufacturing Company. The new venture was quickly noted for its groundbreaking efficiency, its stylish designs, and progressive manufacturing approaches. His early interest was much more in mechanical engineering than it was in sailboats. And uh, he wanted to go to MIT to learn the state of the art of um, materials, mechanics, and particularly the cycles of steam uh, boilers and engines. He was a mathematical genius in that he could take complicated concepts and make them simple. 
This method of carving half models and then taking the offsets with a special offset reading machine was a really speedy way to do it without having to develop actual lines plans for every single drawing. So conceivably he could carve a model and get the uh, offsets up to the mold loft within the space of a couple days. He very well knew that you had to get the weight down low and uh, was ingenious in some of the ways that he accomplished it. But the only way a boat's going to carry sail is to get the weight low and allow it to carry a lot of sail when the wind blows. And his did it better than most. The entire manufacturing company was vertically integrated and everything fell under Captain Nat's purview. So it was unusual at that time period for the designer and the drafting office to also be working in tandem with the construction shop, the sailmaker. There was a foundry, they were building steam plants and boilers. Everything was being built there on site. Um, and they had absolute and complete control over everything. We're really lucky that they were so well built and with such fine materials and were so light and strong, but also they stood the test of time pretty well. One of the secrets of the longevity of these Harrishoff manufactured yachts was the use of longleaf yellow pine in their construction. It's fantastic stuff to work with. It's, it's so filled with resin that when you hold it up to the light, it almost glows. That meant also that it's very, very rot resistant, really tough, really hard. The trees, you know, the old growth, super tight rings, really dense. Alera, which is the, the first of the New York 30s, built in 1905, or the first launched, um, still has about 90% of her original longleaf yellow pine planking. In 1913, Harrisoff designed and built nine New York 50s for the New York Yacht Club. The 50s were an attempt to make racing more economical and strike a balance between the 70 class of the 1900s and the smaller New York 30 and P-class boats. These yachts had the reputation of being seaworthy and heavy winds. Only one New York 50 survives today, Spartan. HM Co. was famous for building boats upside down, even up until a very large scale. So the New York 50s were actually the largest vessels that they still planked upside down and then would roll them over to complete the interior. And then while the planking was going on, there was a whole other team of laborers who were building the deck furniture, the cabins, the bulkheads, all the interiors. So, you know, they were able to sort of assemble these things piece by piece in a very, very efficient manner. Spartan's mast doesn't have any metal bands that are bolted straight to it. Um, they may be bolted around it, but like all of the, all the bolsters that hold the, the uh, soft eyes of the, of the shrouds up are built into the mast. They're all wood. There's no metal bands, there's no shackles, there's no, nothing like that. And he was trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve today with, with carbon and, and modern high tensile uh, materials with the materials that he had at hand. The sails on these boats are uh, structurally are just as important as a rig. You really have to pay attention to the construction of the sail to interact with the rig properly to really make the boat go um, in the way that you want her to move. You can't buy certain pieces of hardware anymore that make these things the special beings that they are. And, and so you have to recreate a lot of stuff and you have to wind up doing a lot of mechanical drawing and recreation of hardware. They were built just the year before the Cup Defender Resolute, 1913. So they really do sort of bear a family resemblance to her, I think. They were universal roll boats, so, you know, very sensible in their form, their shape, and their proportions, really elegant. Every America's Cup winning yacht between 1893 and 1920 was designed by Captain Nat Harrisoff and built by the Harrisoff Manufacturing Company. He also built the successful 1930 Defender Enterprise designed by W. Starling Burgess. The Harrisoff pedigree trickled down to the benefit of his one design classes. There's a direct line between the great schooners of Harrisoff and the America's Cup contenders uh, from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Much of that hardware from Columbia, Reliance, all of those vessels carried right straight through to the great schooners because it was proven hardware. For 30 years, from 1890 to 1920, the um, Harrisoff boats won more trophies than all the others combined. It was a classic case of the customers being attracted to the better mousetrap. They didn't do any advertising, people just came. She's a heavy boat with a lot of weather helm. Nat Harrishoff is known for his weather helm. But uh, she's responsive. If you get to nine, ten knots of breeze and she could get her water line going for you, she's very fast, particularly on a reach. They were 
just incredibly fast and very, very fiercely competitive class, uh, to the extent that they gained themselves the nickname of the Fighting Forties. The first group was built in 1916, and then there was two more 10 years later, two add-ons. And both of those are actually local to us here, so close to home, which is pretty cool for us. A group of New York Yacht Club members formed the syndicate to purchase and restore the New York 40 Merrily in the late 1990s. She proudly represented the club at the America's Cup Jubilee in Cowes, England in 2001. We won the Around the Island race and therefore were awarded the Anniversary Cup and that was a great thing for us. We had uh, Ted Hood uh, on the helm. We had uh, Commodore Isdale on board and we had uh, Herb McCormick of uh, Yachting Magazine. He was reporting for the New York Times. Uh, we just had a, a stellar group of, of sailors on board and all totaled racing, we had 23, 25 people. For us, it was a fabulous event. We won a lot of silver. Uh, we were constantly up on the stage receiving awards. Once we figured it out, figured out how to set the sails, how to set the rigging, we, we won almost every race we entered. Merrily underwent a second major renovation in 2018. Former owner Tim Rudder had done a tremendous job of restoring her stronger, and that had just been finished a couple of years ago. And he had been maintaining her as we all will as custodians, to keep her in great shape. We would actually have uh, launches or, or other boats literally heading right for us. And I, I kept thinking, are they going to ram us? Do I have to go down and get my flare gun? But no, they're just, they just want to get close to take pictures. And it took me a long time to figure that out and therefore not feel threatened by that. <laughs> Captain Nat Harrisoff is frequently described by many maritime authorities as a genius. He and his brother John created meticulously crafted yachts for demanding owners. Harrisoff delivered innovative designs that were technological marvels of their day. Harrisoff produced yachts that defended the America's Cup, served as vital military vessels, created several one design classes that are still raced today and built large luxury cruising yachts that sailed around the globe. Harrisoff even built catamarans. He wanted his boats to sail swiftly, safely, and reliably. He had the attribute of uh, wanting a high standard. He wanted everything to be done just right, and he showed the way. And so uh, he expected that, and he got that. Because Captain Nat was sort of overseeing all of this and everything was happening under the same roof, he was able to a, exert this incredible amount of control, but also it was super efficient. His intelligence is sometimes beyond um, comprehension in the way that he looked at boats as a complete package. I looked at his diary and he made notes how he set up the frames for that boat on November 28th, 1904, how he set the boat onto the keel on December 28th, just four weeks later. So I know his spirit is there somewhere. He must have been an incredible sailor. There's this story of him trialing Reliance, the greatest America's Cup boat ever built in 1903. And they came in uh, to the mooring and uh, took down their sails apparently half a mile uh, before they came up to the mooring. And they then ghosted Reliance to that mooring and hit it right on the spot. And that's with a boat he had never sailed before, that no one had ever sailed before, so he could do that. The average lifespan for wooden boats is about 30 years without major interventions. We think that today around 28% of the original output of somewhere around 2,000 boats still survives, which is, on the one hand, doesn't sound like a lot, but on the other hand, that, that's a lot for a bunch of wooden boats. It's a testament to Nathaniel Green Harrisoff and the Harrisoff Manufacturing Company that so many of his original yachts are still sailing or are in the process of restoration more than 100 years after their original build. Graceful lines, strong but lightweight construction, and speed through the water are the characteristics of a Harrisoff designed and built yacht that were a winning combination then and still are today. I think you'd have to imagine that he would be smiling and he would have a huge satisfaction and maybe, maybe surprise because uh, these boats were very lightly built and I don't think he necessarily expected them to be sailing 100 years later. People value them so much to keep them for more than 100 years and keep them sailing. 
These old boats have a spirit. There's a sentimentality and a feeling of stewardship. I don't subscribe to the idea that people are only excited by speed. I think they're just as excited by a combination of speed and beauty. And it's hard to surpass the beauty of classic boats racing. <laughs>